One of the most challenging scientific questions of the modern age is the question of the evolution of language. Why only humans develop language? And is it language that makes us think, plan, and solve problems in a way that no other animal can? A recently published model of the evolution of speech, called the from where to what model, examined the brains of primates and found footprints in our brains that tell an interesting story of how we became who we are. In the last several decades, orangutans, gorillas, bonobos, and chimpanzees were sure capable of learning sign language. We discovered that these apes are capable of answering questions and solving problems as good as four-year-old children. When the apes initiated conversations, they either demanded an action, me want food, or stated an observation, bird there. These apes, however, never asked questions. Humans, in contrast, from a very young age are renowned for never stopping to ask questions. These findings suggest that throughout human evolution, we transition from curiosity towards items that are present in our environment, like observational statements, to items that are absent in our environment, like WH questions. The emergence of curiosity towards out-of-sight objects also explains the human race's oldest desire to discover what lies beyond the mountain, the ocean, the solar system. The curiosity towards what's absent was thus the reason for the rapid migration of our species around the globe. Curiosity towards the unknown is also the driving force behind the development of science and technology. The ability to question is therefore our most defining characteristic. It's what makes the human species unique. But if humans are the only ape to ever ask a question, then what propelled our ancestors to ask? And even more, can we determine what was the first question? To answer these questions, we need first to learn how monkeys and apes hear and make sound. In the brain of primates, including humans, two pathways connect the brain area that detects sounds, the auditory cortex, with the brain area that moves our mouth inferior frontal gyrus. The first pathway is known as the auditory ventral stream or the auditory what pathway. Thanks to this pathway, primates can recognize sounds. The second pathway is the auditory dorsal stream. This pathway is also known as the auditory wear pathway. Thanks to this pathway, Primates can determine the location of sounds. In humans, however, the auditory dorsal stream is also responsible for our ability to speak. This raises important questions. Was it our ability to localize sound that evolved into speech? And if so, how come our ability to vocalize words did not develop from our ability to understand them? A possible answer can be found in studies that demonstrated the auditory dorsal stream of monkeys to detect and produce a special type of calls called contact calls. These calls help non-human primates stay in contact with other primates in their tribe and also play an important role in helping mothers and offspring find each other in cases of separation. This finding suggests that the first question ever asked was, Mommy, where are you? And that the curiosity towards the unknown began by lost infants looking for their mother. In order to respond to a contact call, the listener needs to first identify the speaker, localize the call, and determine that the face of the speaker is not present at that location. Evidence that the auditory dorsal stream is responsible for detecting contact calls are also studies that describe this pathway in addition to sound localization with the identification of speakers and integration of faces with calls. Further evidence that human speech emerged from contact call exchange is also present in the finding that both of them are processed primarily in the left hemisphere of the brain. Rats with mutation to the genes that affect speech production in humans were also reported to lose the ability to call their mother during separation. But the calls of non-human primates are innate, automatic, and emotional, like our screaming, laughing, and crying. If speech emerged from contact calls, how did our ancestors gain control over their mouth and vocal cords? A clue into the intermediate stage between contact call exchange and speech is the role of the human auditory dorsal stream in analyzing the intonations of the words we hear.
a study comparing skulls of ancient humans also showed that the first member of our species, Homo habilis, had a brain that differed from earlier apes by having a very developed auditory dorsal stream. The possible course for developing speech is that two and a half million years ago, our ancestor, Homo habilis, acquired partial control of the lips, tongue, and vocal cords. This development enabled Homo habilis to modify the innate calls with intonations. This further enabled Homo habilis to modify their contact calls so that they could express different contact calls in different situations. One type of contact call signaled low levels of distress, whereas another type signaled high levels of distress. This stage in the evolution of language is evident by the tendency of babies to modify the call for their mother with intonations in order to signal a state of emergency. Mommy! Or when asking for her location. Mommy! Because high-level distress calls are considered equivalent to the command, come here now, and low-level distress calls are equivalent to the question, where are you? This stage in the evolution of language can be the reason we use intonations when converting sentences into commands or questions. The ability to use intonations in order to signal low or high levels of distress eventually provided the platform for the first yes-no question-answer conversation. In this scenario, a child emits a low-level distress call when asking for permission for interacting with objects. And the mother responds with a low-level distress call to approve the interaction. Or a high-level distress call to discourage it. As generations passed, our ancestors' ability to modify innate calls with intonations matured into volitional control over the mouth and vocal cords. As a result, instead of children asking approval of playing with an object based on context, they can name the object they want to play with and use intonations to signal if they demand it or ask for it. In summary, based on the model described here, the from where to what model, the first ancestor to ever develop speech was a bipedal ape who used intonations in order to ask questions. Through years of fossil reconstruction and analysis of neuroscientific data, we managed for the first time to visualize this missing link. Here is a short simulation of this species. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha